Every fall, I've got to have an apple pie. And today I'm going to show you how to easily make a delicious apple pie hard cider at home. I make this every year. It tastes like fall in a glass, spiced with cinnamon, and kissed with vanilla. I'm Trent Musho, and you're watching The Brew Show. Let's celebrate fall and make some hard cider. Making cider is a great way for beginners to get started home brewing. It only takes a few ingredients, apple juice, yeast, and the flavor. In this case, cinnamon and vanilla to give us those notes of fresh baked apple pie. If you're headed out to any apple orchards this fall, feel free to grab a few extra jugs of apple juice or cider. But if not, no worries. I'm just using store-bought apple juice. This recipe calls for two gallons of juice and will yield just about 1.75 gallons once complete. Feel free to scale this recipe up or down to make as much as you'd like. As a reminder for store-bought juice, make sure it has no preservatives. Seen on labels as sorbates, sulfites, or benzoates. These preservatives will inhibit the yeast from fermenting. Before starting, we need to take an original gravity reading. In most cases, store-bought apple juice comes in with an original gravity of 1.050. Now I put the juice in the fermenter. I'm using a two gallon food safe bucket, but you can use whatever fermenter you have at home. A small glass jug or a large mason jar work perfectly. As always, make sure your fermenter and anything else that comes into contact with your cider is clean and sanitized. This will just make sure no wild yeast or bacteria infect your cider. That could ruin the whole batch. Next I add yeast nutrient, two teaspoons. These nutrients feed the yeast so they are happy and healthy and I can limit off flavors that come from poor yeast health. It will also ensure a fast start to the fermentation. You don't need yeast nutrient, but it will help make better cider. For yeast I'm using Saf Ale US05 American Ale Yeast. I like this yeast because it has a clean flavor and lets the apple and additional ingredients shine. Feel free to use whichever yeast you have on hand or feel like using. Now I give things a good stir to mix in the nutrient and then pop on the top to the fermenter. A good mix incorporates oxygen. Oxygen is important as fermentation starts so that the yeast can use it to do their job. But once fermentation is in full swing, it's important to avoid oxygen as much as possible or else you can risk oxidizing your cider, leading to off flavors. Then I add the airlock to allow CO2 to escape and not let anything in. If you don't have an airlock, you can just use a piece of foil over the top of your fermenter. I set the fermenter in a cool dark area and allow it to ferment for one week until the airlock stops bubbling. At that point, I take a final gravity reading and get a reading of 0.998, meaning this cider comes in at 6.8%. It's time to add the apple pie flavorings. I'm gonna use two cinnamon sticks, you could use ground cinnamon as well, but I prefer the sticks. I also add a half teaspoon of vanilla, preferably pure vanilla, but you could also use whatever vanilla extract you have on hand. In addition, you could also add cloves or ginger. Feel free to experiment and play around with your favorite fall flavors. Now let that sit in a cool dark place for another five to seven days. Take a sample every day or so until the flavor is to your liking. Once the cider is at my preferred taste, it's time to bottle or keg. Kegging is always easier, but I'm gonna bottle this batch up and this is how I usually bottle condition my drinks. I start by using a priming calculator like this one. It has instructions and extra information on the page. I put in my specifics like the amount of cider, desired pressure, and temperature. Note that the temperature is not the current temperature of the cider but the highest temperature it hit during the last few weeks. If you're unsure, take a temperature reading now and add five degrees. That should put you roughly in the right place as fermentation creates some heat. Once everything is put in, it spits out the amount of sugar needed to feed the yeast and build pressure in the bottle to create bubbles. Corn sugar is the best option in my opinion because it dissolves easily, but table sugar works just as well. I'm using table sugar today and it takes just a little longer to fully incorporate. I put the sugar into another clean and sanitized bucket or pot and then I carefully rack the cider onto the sugar. This way the sugar is evenly distributed throughout the cider. Some people like to divide the sugar into each individual bottle and then transfer into that. But to me, that's a bit more work, and I'm all about making it as easy as I can. Give things a light stir with a sanitized spoon to mix in the sugar, but don't mix too much or you risk oxidation. Now I just transfer that mixture into each bottle. Again, making sure the bottles are clean and sanitized. And make sure your bottles are fermentation grade, not the thin decorative bottles you see at dollar stores. This bottling wand is a nice tool to have as it uses a spring that when pressed down it lets out the liquid but as soon as you release it stops. But you can always just crimp the line in between bottles to limit spilling. Be ready with plenty of towels on hand. Fill the bottles all the way up and when you take out the wand or tube it will leave the perfect amount of headspace. Just enough to build the right amount of pressure. 
Once the bottles are filled, cap them up and set them somewhere dark and cool for about two weeks. At which point, the cider is ready to drink. This apple cider is crisp like a fall day. It has a perfect level of tartness and dryness that I love. But if you like it sweeter, you could try back sweetening your cider before packaging. And the hints of cinnamon and vanilla come through strong on the nose, but just lightly on the palate, giving you that subtle apple pie flavor without hitting you over the head with spice. You could definitely dial this up, but just go slow and add a little at a time. You don't want to overdo it. What's your favorite fall flavor? Do you like apple pie or are you more of a pumpkin spice person? This is a great change up from heavy beers that are often associated with fall. And if you're already sick of pumpkin spice, then I recommend you giving this one a try. And let me know if you do. If you have any questions about making cider, be sure to let me know. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.